Park and uh, also Professor uh, Zhang Yuguan from University at Buffalo. And um, so here is the brief description of our project. So basically, uh, uh, so this is the system structure of our project. So basically, we want to build a UAV network via software and software code, software and hardware code design. And um, and here, so our project aims to develop novel approaches for decentralized intelligence spectrum sharing in millimeter wave UAV networks. Uh, as we said before, so we call that DISH UNet. And uh, so this network can achieve high efficiency and resiliency based on hardware and software code design. And uh, we have four thrusts in this, in this um, project, including energy efficient systolic accelerator for simultaneous real time signal processing and machine learning. And the second thrust is to uh, design a transceiver for high mobility UAV networks. So here, we emphasize to use a new uh, physical air modulation scheme called OTFS. And uh, the third thrust is to bridge the of optimization framework, game theory, and the reinforcement learning in decentralized spectrum sharing. So here, we want to design the spect uh, spectrum sharing scheme using you know, the combination of the Apno framework boosted by reinforcement learning. And lastly, the first thrust is to design mobility resilient millimeter wave beam learning. And um, one uh, another important feature of our project is that we're going to do real uh, a realistic uh, uh, implementation and the test uh, validation of our proposed uh, system. Uh, you can see on these uh, two figures on the left hand side. So this is our uh, hardware, and uh, we use M cube to uh, for the millimeter wave communication. And uh, on the right hand side, this is our U this is our UAV. So we have a quadcopter, and here we can see we have a software, video part, power, uh, power module, and uh, navigation GPS. And uh, this is the basic, a very brief description of our project. So if you're interested, please stop by my poster. And uh, thank you. Hello, welcome to our poster. I'm Z Ding from the UC Davis campus. And we're here to talk about the uh, channel state information feedback for massive MIMO. So in particular, the importance of uh, my massive MIMO in feature wireless communication is well known. And the important attribute of such a system is that uh, the GNOB as a, at the base station must know the downlink channel state information in order to effectively design precoders to provide high rate coverage for the user equipment. However, the user equipment must aid the GNOB to provide information about what downlink channel state information it sees. And that information can be massive because you have a massive MIMO, which means a lot of antennas and a lot of subbands. So that information feedback can consume too much bandwidth. And our goal is trying to figure out how and how to reduce that kind of feedback and still allow the GNOB to design a good precoder uh, it was a high enough accuracy to provide good downlink coverage. All right, so we're going to talk about several contributions. One of them is to utilize the channel reciprocity in FDD to aid deep learning network. We're going to also look at how that channel reciprocity allows pilot reduction in forwarding channel. And we also going to discuss how we utilize the temporal correlation across different subframes in the uh, channel state information so that uh, future channel state information can benefit from the past estimate. And lastly, we are going to focus on how to reduce complexity of this deep learning neural network model so that the UE, which typically is a smaller device, does not have to house a very high complexity uh, neural network model, therefore making it possible to use low power and small form in the UE, so that uh, is still uh, that is still capable of sending a good feedback for massive mammal uh, coverage. Thank you and welcome to the poster. This is a quick overview and update on award two one two eight five eight four. Collaborative research, swift context aware spectrum coexistence design and implementation in satellite bands or ascent a collaborative project between Virginia Tech and George Mason University. After reviewing the comments and the current FCC approach to allocating spectrum, we identified several areas of potential socioeconomic impact. These include a barrier to entry for innovative systems needed in rural areas, 
the impact of job creation in the local economies and how the best and highest use goal of spectrum allocation is not met by a one-size-fits-all approach. A tool or a collection of tools that can be used to accurately determine interference potential on a case-by-case -case basis would allow policymakers to better understand individual scenarios. As of now, there are proposed tools that meet one or two of the items shown here separately. However, for policy decisions, a collection of tools that funnels data in each of these categories into a digestible analysis framework to identify the best use on a scoring system would reduce blind spots in spectrum sharing and allocation decisions. Also, we are working to extend initial development of a realistic simulation environment and interfacing and integration with the initial context-aware ascent dynamic spectrum access framework to include first, near real-time simulation, second, a more advanced and robust prioritization framework, third, consideration of finer-grained weather and or signal fading observations, fourth, interfacing of a context-aware multi-domain spectrum access system or MDSAS with the simulator to compare context-aware centrally managed DSA with context-aware autonomous frequency selection guided by context-contingent prioritization policy. Hi, I'm Stephen Bach, representing the Brown and University of Washington SWIFTSAT project on developing machine learning methods for detecting RFI and radio astronomy observations. Our goal is to train a neural network to detect a very wide variety of RFI. RFI detection has been approached traditionally with various non-machine learning algorithms that specialize in finding different types of RFI. Our approach is to use these algorithms as training data for a neural network that generalizes beyond them while avoiding the need for hand-labeled training data. Over the past year, we've made progress on both ends of this framework. First, with additional support from an SII graduate research supplement, we've developed a new method for near-field interferometry that can spot faint, nearby sources of RFI, like reflections off of airplanes. Next, we've been working on developing methods for spotting RFI in image space that is hard to spot in Fourier space. Finally, we've been working on training neural networks to detect RFI. Please come by our poster to learn more. We at Rutgers University are researching to enable spectrum coexistence of 5G millimeter wave and passive weather sensing. The aim of the project is to study and address the concern that the adjacency of band N258 to 23.8 gigahertz, which is the frequency used by weather satellite instruments like AMCUA to measure atmospheric water vapor, can potentially lead to radio frequency interference, or RFI, degrading the accuracy of satellite observations. Our results show that without proper safeguards, RFI from future dense 5G base stations could lead to less reliable weather predictions, which is essential for storm tracking and emergency warnings. To quantify this impact, we studied this problem using real weather data sets along with RFI models to see the potential impact of future 5G millimeter wave deployments in the contiguous United States on weather forecasts. We present a terahertz wireless communication system based on chip scale carrier frequency comp and broadband terahertz photomixer. Optical frequency combs are unique light sources that coherently link optical frequencies with microwave signals. In time domain, it's an optical pulse train and it's contain multiple frequency components in frequency domain with a certain frequency separation. Carrier frequency comp is generated by optically pumping an ultra high Q micro resonator. The generated Kercoms are injected into the broadband terahertz photo mixer for generating multiple terahertz carriers. The power of the generated terahertz can be tuned by controlling the input power of the terahertz mixer. Finally, the optically modulated data signal is moved into the baseband by two-stage heterodyne mixing. The frequency of the generated terahertz can span from 300 gigahertz to 3 terahertz, which can cover all atmospheric transparent window of terahertz wireless communication. Hi everyone, it's my pleasure to present our SWIFT project, Data-Driven Learning and Optimization in Reconfiguring Intelligent Surface in an industry wireless network for the ones manufacturing. Integrate the RS into industry wireless network is very challenging. Therefore, the goal of this project is to address the fundamental research challenges from both theoretic optimization version and also to the practical implemented realities. Specifically, we're going to address 
four technical objectives. First, we're going to formulate a novel hardware-driven cross-layer optimization problems for IS enhanced wise network by, by considering hardware constraints. Then we're going to develop a new type of data-enabled learning algorithm to solve the formulated cross-layer optimization problems by balancing the computational complexity and learning efficiency. After that, we're going to extend our data-enabled learning into distributed computational efficient learning mechanism to reduce network risk during the learning. Eventually, we're going to develop and the experiments characterize wireless RS implementation for wireless network. We're going to work with our industry partner folder company to implement our technology. If you have any questions regarding this project, please come to our process session. You're most welcome. Thank you, everybody. Hello, my name is Charlie Bayless. And I'm serving as lead PI of a three university effort between Baylor, Colorado, and Purdue to explore the coexistence of 5G wireless with passive weather radiometers using reconfigurable circuit arrays. The spatial spectral broker coordinates between 5G and passive radiometer systems and stipulates 5G transmission limits based on interference potential. Our team has designed a four element array with reconfigurable 24 gigahertz impedance tuners, as well as the implementation of the ability to measure antenna current and voltage to determine power, spectrum, and even the array pattern. We're currently implementing a test bed to assess the coexistence of this 5G array with a radiometer. The test setup under construction consists of the four element array using reconfigurable impedance tuners and in situ measurements in each element of the array, along with a 24 gigahertz radiometer, with a broker controlling the interactions. High efficiency PAs for millimeter wave communication systems. To achieve high data rates and high order modulation like 64 quantum field, this modulation scheme has high peak to average power ratio and requires highly linear PA to improve the EPM uh, below the spec and decrease the spectral leakage to adjacent channels. This high peak to average also will impact the average efficiency of the system. At 26 GHz dirty PA and 19 GHz isolated confinement PA are proposed. For the dirty PA, adaptive splicing is crucial for linear dirty performance. However, they suffer from high variations across PDT, which leads to high degradation in EPM and spectral leakage in practical scenarios. Dirty PA with novel PDT and sensitive adaptive splicing is proposed in this work, achieving a high average power added efficiency for 64 to 1 modulation. For the 90 gigahertz isolated combined PA, it's hard to design a dirty PA in this range of frequencies. That's why isolated combining technique is proposed achieving 1.4x improvement for the power and efficiency at 6 dB power back off compared to class B PAs. Hi, this video is an invitation for you to stop by at the poster with the title Advancing Coexistence Through a Cross-Layer Design Platform with an Adaptive Frequency Selective Radio Front End and Digital Algorithms. Essentially, this research aims to create a platform and first hardware prototypes for the co-design of next-generation RF receivers that have the ability to suppress both in-channel as well as adjacent channel interference without compromising the reception of desired signals. And to do so, we are developing frequency-selective limiters, which are devices that can distinguish and attenuate interference that is characterized by a power level above a certain threshold. We are also integrating these frequency selective limiters with CMOS integrated circuits and digital signal processing methods for enhanced interference resilience of receivers that operate in crowded spectrum environments. Hello. On behalf of the project team, I welcome you to visit our poster on facilitating novel modalities for spectrum sharing between Earth observing microwave radiometers and commercial users. This project is led by co-PIs Joel Johnson of OSU and David Sarobinski of BU, with supported graduate students Nicholas Brendel of OSU and myself, Jonathan Chamberlain of BU. Our key update consists of the following two papers. Spectrum sharing between Earth exploration satellite and commercial services and economic feasibility analysis. At DISPAN this week, covering the economics of coexistence with commercial users under an open access spectrum model, and estimating the retrieval performance of passive remote sensing under alternate spectrum sharing scenarios, which is at the upcoming IGARS conference, which considers methods to promote flexible use of spectrum while maintaining an acceptable level of error and radiometer measurement. Our broader impacts include the, the promotion of coexistence between scientific and commercial users of high band spectrum, fostering new interdisciplinary research collaborations, and making radiometer footprint trace data accessible in a convenient format. 
We invite you to visit the poster for more details on the project as well as our future directions. Good morning. Our project is SwiftSat, efficient and on-demand spectrum coexistence for satellite terrestrial systems. We aim to design a spectrum coexistence strategy for satellite and terrestrial systems. One unique challenge is that passive users in satellite systems are exceptionally susceptible to interference. As a case study, we consider the 4,990 to 5,000 megahertz band for radio astronomy and the adjacent 4,940 to 4,990 megahertz band proposed for shared use between public safety and commercial 5G users. We propose a power control strategy and utilize a lexicographic order to fairly maximize 5G base station powers while managing the out-of-band interference from 5G base stations to protect radio astronomy sites. For the very large baseline array site in Hillsborough County, New Hampshire, our solution achieves an 82% activation rate for 5G base stations while meeting the interference threshold for the VLBA. In our future work, we will design more spectrum coexistence schemes tailored to terrestrial systems and diverse satellite systems. Hi everyone, I'm John Ron from University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Our project title is Dynamic, Dynamic Millimeter Wave Spectrum Sharing Techniques for Public Safety Communications. This project is in collaboration with Dr. Ayla Mikiji from Ohio State, as well as Dr. Demet Batur and Jennifer Ryan from Supply Chain Management at University of Nebraska-Lincoln. In this project, our goal is to integrate millimeter wave solutions into public safety communication approaches. We're developing dynamic millimeter wave spectrum sharing solutions to allow for novel use cases and design joint radar communication system, uh, millimeter wave spectrum sharing system, especially in a private cell context, uh, considering business incentives such as leasing, as well as millimeter wave next generation radio access network solutions, uh, including uh, channel characterization in unique environments. We are excited to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks everyone for sticking through. Uh, we'll have lunch and then we'll have the poster session at 1.15. Thank you.